Okie doke. 20 R carburetor on the Toyota pickup, 1975-1978. This happens to be a 78. Pardon me for being distracted. I'm going to go over the basic stuff that's on this carburetor. Mm, electrical, the only thing is fuel shutoff solenoid right here. It's grounded on the carburetor and it's got a power line that goes right to this plug. This is switched 12 volt power. It's tied into your ignition key circuit. Whenever the key's on, this powers up. When it powers up, it pulls the plunger back and allows fuel to flow through your idle circuit. That's it for electrical on this carb, as it sits. I have desmogged this, so there's not the same amount of stuff here that would be on the stock. Adjustments. There's a screw buried down here, and it's on a downward angle. I don't know if you can see that right here. That's your high idle adjustment. This screw here is your curb idle adjustment, or hot adjustment. Here is your mixture adjustment. Baseline setting on this is you turn it all the way in. Don't crank it down just until it starts to stop. Lightly seated, because it's a needle in here. And you back it out one and three quarter turns. When you do your hot idle adjustment later for mixture, if you don't know how to do that, look up Lean Best Idle on Google. It'll explain it better than I can tell you. But one and three quarter turns out is enough to get her running and running decent so you can start making adjustments. Okay. Over here, this screw here. I'm going to try to bring it down so you can get a better look at that. Right there. This screw. That's your throttle positioner. It's also known as a dash pot. Uh, as I said in the previous video, make sure it's engaged. If you turn to the right and you don't feel any resistance, it's not set right. You need to run that in until you see it actually moving the throttle arm. Any of the tabs right here, or you can even watch back here and see this move. Run it in until you get some resistance. Grab your throttle, rev it up, let it go. It should take two seconds to fall from rev back to dead idle. And this is done hot. If it takes longer, it's too tight, back the screw off to the left. All right. And that's pretty much it for adjustments you want to fool with. You can adjust the choke and you have to loosen these screws on the side and then turn this. This is a water activated choke. It's got, it, it works by heat from the coolant. Uh, from 79 on up, they, ch they changed it to, well, actually 81 on up, they changed it to an electric choke. It's wired in also to that 12 volt switched. There's just a heating element in there that runs electrically instead of by the water. That's the only difference. Go away, plane. <laughs> vacuum. This huge port down here is for your brake booster. This huge port over on this side, right there, is for, for your PCV valve. Positive crankiest ventilation. You pull that out, shake it. If you hear it rattling, it's good. If it doesn't, it's bad. Clean it or put a new one in. Uh, it has vacuum secondaries, but it works on passages in the carb. You don't have to fool with that. This is the old EGR ported vacuum. I currently have that working the throttle positioner slash dash pot. Ported vacuum is the proper thing for that piece. And I should rearrange that a little bit so that tube is not touching my hot thermostat housing. This one on the right with the curve is also ported. I'm using that for my distributor advance. It goes right here. I have that teed off, and I'm using that for my vacuum purge line from my evaporation canister. If you pull the evap canister when you desmog this vehicle, you don't have to do that. 
but you need to run a vent from your carb and your tank. Okay, this is a tank vent. It's just vapor. Same with this fitting up here. This is a vent for the carburetor bowl where the fuel sits. The fuel only gets up halfway up that glass. This is all airspace inside here. So that's vapor. When it gets hot, this thing will boil out vapor. You can plug this like that's plugged. But the vapor has nowhere to go except up these vent tubes that come from the bowl and they're going to go down your carburetor and cause the hot, hard starting problem like I had. So, at least run a piece of line from it and down, you know, passing it past the frame somewhere in the chassis so you at least dump the fumes. I put the canister back on because I'd rather catch them and not pollute. But that's just me. Okay, that that's capped. Uh, so far... I believe that's ported, and I could have used it, but I'm, I couldn't be sure, so that's why I teed this off. That's your auxiliary accelerator pump. It's got a diaphragm in it. I have that capped off. That works with the old emission system. Uh, here. This port up top loops around back here, and that's the choke pull-off. It opens the choke up when you hit the accelerator when it's cold. Otherwise, this flap stays closed. This other one here that I have capped, this would be your hot idle compensator. That's this rectangular port. You, see, you can see it right here, a little brass line, and I got a cap on it. So you can see that. This is supposed to add extra air into the mix when you're doing a lot of idling in hot weather and heavy traffic. Again, a lot of people desmog this, they just plug it off, plug that port, plug that port, be done with it. When this is cold, there's a little bimetal valve that opens up in there. When it's cold, it's, it's shut. When it gets hot, the metal curls and opens a valve that goes into the body. That's why you need to cap that. It could be an extra vacuum leak. But I've got this like this because I ran out of 8th inch vacuum caps I don't have anymore. But I'll take care of it. And that's it for vacuum. If you take off the old stock carb and put a Weber on, there's only two. There's the brake booster vacuum. And there is distributor advanced vacuum. Just two vacuum lines. If you don't have power brakes, you only have one vacuum line. Weber doesn't have the dash pot on it for some reason. I don't know how that works, but that's Weber. I'm stuck with my stock carburetor, and that's what I'm going with. So there you go. That's the basic overview. So all the basic vacuum lines go. At least in a deep sea smog condition. As far as smog equipment and emissions equipment, you need to keep that functioning. You need to keep it on there. You want it hooked up. Get the book. Get the manual. I don't know if the Haynes has the chart in it or not. These old trucks don't seem to have the vacuum chart. This might have been it, but I can't clean that enough to actually read it. I've tried. <laughs> uh, other than that, factory service manual. Look on eBay for original ones. They can be pricey. They can be anywhere between like 50 and 80 bucks, but it's got all the information you need and you won't have to guess like I've been guessing. Save yourself the headache, spend the money. It's one time where spending the money and not being cheap actually makes sense. And that's it. We're done. Hope this is some help to somebody who's looking for the information on it. Got any questions? Let me know. I've been through this thing extensively. I can tell you. you got questions about it? I can usually tell you. So just let me know. All right. Thanks for watching, y'all. Appreciate it. See y'all later.